Today I'd like to talk to you about the Open Control Network, or OCN. What if you had truly an open control plane to go along with your data plane? What if your vendors truly wanted to sell you open multi-vendor products? What if your vendors gave you solutions that wouldn't require you to make changes every year? This can happen with an open control plane called the OCN. Let's run an idea by you. Well, we have a few constraints. The data planes are already cooked in hardware and in software. Um, they can change and evolve over time, but what's in the marketplace today won't change. So we have to make a solution work with existing data planes. But there are open and mature control planes available, and there's products based on them. So why don't we use a, like a distributed network database, something that's in the network? How about the LISP mapping database? LISP is the locator ID separation protocol and has been a technology that's been in the IETF since 2009. We have nine IETF RFCs published, but what the LISP mapping database can do for you is hold multiple types of addresses at the same time. A single instance of the control plane would run to support those multiple addresses. We can get central policy, centralized policy and access control, and it can give you openness and programmability. This is truly an open standard and has specifications that people can implement to. We are trying to build an ecosystem of partners, many partners in the data center space, campus, application, ADC players, and technology players. And we're going to bring this ecosystem of people together to do demonstrations and build products based on LISP, and we're going to call this ecosystem the OCN. So we're going to do a demo today to show you how the OCN is in action. We brought five vendors together back in June. Uh, they were all motivated to do their own LISP implementation. Um, after a single meeting, they wanted to do this demo, and openness was really important to them. Um, and the demo they felt which gave them the most value was IP address mobility, where you can move an IP address anywhere in the network, not just data center to data center, but anywhere in the network. It was clear how LISP brought value to different product lines from these vendors. And these implementations were a combination of an open source implementation, uh, write your own, and lispers.net. So architecturally what we're trying to do is only put the changes in the network where they need to go. We don't want to change any of the end systems, their operating system, their protocol stack, they remain untouched. And we also don't want to touch the core network. The core network could be an enterprise core network, it could be a data center spine architecture, it could be the capital I internet. What we want to do is we want to put the LISP overlay at the edges of the network as close as possible to these end systems. So what we did is we brought together Arista, A10, Aruba, HP, and Lispers.net. We used Arista and A10 in two different data centers. Arista was a, a top of rack switch running LISP. A10 was a load balance running LISP. We wanted to move a VM from one data center to the other, while a laptop that was connected wireless to Aruba would move to a wired connection to HP. We found that both of these end systems could move at the same time, keep their connections up, and not have to change their IP addresses. This reduces OPEX quite a bit for IP address management, and uh, this mobility can happen while the core stays static and scales. Enough with the talk, let's get to the demo. So I'd like to show you the OCN in action. Uh, what you're seeing right here is a web application that is querying the map server so we can, uh, so we can draw visually where the VMs are currently attached to. And the, the web application is using the API of the mapping database. This lispers.net system here is the map server. Uh, so what we do is we assign a Lisp endpoint ID 66 to the VM, and we assigned a Lisp endpoint ID 77 to the laptop. And that, those two things will continue to move, and the core doesn't have to know anything about it. The red addresses are the routing locators, the Lisp routing locators, um, that the core will route packets to. So the one address is Arista, the two address is A10, the three address is Aruba, and the four address is, is the HP. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to the display on the map server. And we're going to focus on these two EIDs here, the 66 um, VM and the 77 laptop. And then we'll look and see who it's currently attached to. Right now, the VM is attached to A10, and the laptop just moved from Aruba to HP. This display is updating every one second. The VMs are moving every 20 seconds. We have scripts running in the background. Okay. Uh, pings are going. We have TCP connections up. And these connections are staying up because the laptop and the VM have a TCP connection between these two addresses. 
and what's changing underneath they don't know about. Okay? You see that um, they keep moving and this address keeps changing and the Arista and A10 boxes will encapsulate now to the new addresses. Okay? If we now see the Arista is here at the 66, we can go over to the, um, the XTR and we can see that the Arista has dynamically discovered this 666 and now is encapsulating to 777 to the HP box. If I keep updating this, you will see that there's some packets per second. Let's go back to the map server and see that we switched to A10. Let's go to the A10 box and see what it's doing. Ah, it's now discovered the same 66 VM, and now it's encapsulating to the Aruba. And let's verify that, A10 and Aruba. So we come here, there are VMs off A10, and the laptops off Aruba. So that concludes our demonstration. I would like to thank the engineers from Arista, Aruba, A10, HP, and Lispers.net. We believe this is just the beginning for a groundswell of support for the OCM.